So Brenda Candio, ninth on our leaderboard right now at 2-0. Pete Ingram, also 2-0 with Jessica Guy Control. We've seen Brennan with Mardu Pyromancer, four-color Pyromancer, uh, really dismantle some Jess Guy decks in, over the course of this last year. Yeah. The, the previous iteration he was playing, he was splashing green for Blood Braid Elf. We're not doing that this weekend. And it, it's good in the matchups that you're already pretty favored in anyway, so I do like going back to just the cleaner Mardu version. Yeah, Pete's going to start with Serum Visions. Now, Ryan, what's difficult in this sort of matchup for Jeskai is that Jeskai is a deck full of, an of very efficient answers. However, Brennan's de is a deck full of threats that are difficult to answer. Yes. Um, so the, if it's like the longer they cast cards, Brennan will get ahead. What can Pete do to clean that up? What's he looking toward then? Yeah, so you can pull ahead. Electrolyze is one of your better cards in the matchup because Lingering Souls is such a problematic card for Decandio. Um, Peter only has the one Electrolyze. You want to be heavier on that, so it's unfortunate. He, is a, he does have two Supreme Verdict. That's going to clean up Bedlam Revelers, though frequently if Reveler does come down, the damage is already done. One of the ways you can keep pace and even pull ahead is by leveraging Cryptic Command, certainly in conjunction with Snapcaster Mage. The one thing about the Mardu deck is the more time you give it, the deck is built around this Faithless Looting Engine. That means it's almost never going to run out of gas. So Pete has to actually close the game quickly once he does turn the corner. And Brandon does start on a Faithless Looting there as well. He actually picked up two lands, and it looks like he discarded the exact two cards he drew off Faithless Looting. Not, not ideal, but it does mean that he won't end up flooding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see it looks like a pretty land-heavy holding. So the best thing about looting, you have time, you flash it back, you get rid of two more lands. You would ideally want to be discarding a Lingering Souls, generating value as you go, but Pete's not playing a deck that's going to punish Brennan for missing on that much value. He'll have time to flash back that Faithless Looting. And Pete knows he's double-topped on the scry here from Serum Visions. It's always scary when you see a control player make a play like that. Now, do you think there's a chance that Pete has assessed the matchup wrong? Turn one, Black Cleave Cliff's Faithless Looting could look like a Hollow One deck. Yeah, and if you're thinking Brennan's off the radar, it also looks like Gorio's Vengeance. So weird mix, discarding lands if that's the deck, but it certainly yeah. looks like Hollow One as well. Yeah, with such different decks, you have a combo deck, a graveyard deck, and a fair deck, it's very difficult, I think, to resolve these early Serum Visions. Mm -hmm. For the two decks, when we talk about Mardu Pyromancer versus Hollow One, the cards that are mm -hmm. good for Ingram are actually very similar. Path to Exile is one of your better cards, kind of in either matchup. They're lower impact against Mardu Pyromancer than they are against Hollow One in a lot of spots, but you're still drawing to a lot of the same things. Pete's turn was two copies of Serum Visions. Interestingly enough, he, dealt, he scried top top on the first and top top on the second. So each card of spell really just cycled. Yep. You do build up the graveyard, though. There are three logic knots in Ingram's build. And now if I'm on Pete's side, the card I'm looking for with a start like this is Search for Azkanta. Once he gets it into play, Mardu's not very able to answer an enchantment or a land, and that can really pull him ahead. Well, Mardu has some outs to lands. This is a Blood Moon deck. Okay. But Sur Search is certainly one of your better cards. It's actually one of the draws to playing Jeskai Control. Young Pyromancer, the turn two play here for Brennan. Looks like Pete does have a Lightning Bolt in his hand, but we'll see if he can produce red mana for the card. I believe a Sacred Foundry is hanging out there. Definitely worth shocking to clean that one up, unless he has a different long-term plan for it. Yeah, each card out of Brennan's deck requires specific answers. And Pete's going to let him untap with it, and it looks like he'll go for Vendillion Click in Brennan's draw. I'm a little surprised by this as opposed to just uh, going ahead and casting the Lightning Bolt. Part of it, Vendillion Click pretty poor in the matchup because of Lingering Souls, because the Marta Pyromancer deck's pretty easy, able to deal with it. And this turn, we know if Brennan just has a land, he can at least flashback Faithless Looting. Yeah. He'll get at least one token for his trouble. It does look like Pete has been rewarded, however. Seeing Brennan's hand, he has two creatures and only one spell. That spell was Lingering Souls, which might even be the best card in the matchup, and Pete's able to clean it up just before Brennan can cast it. Yeah. A risky line for Pete, but I think that worked out. Speaking of risky lines, you see a second young Pyromancer into Candio's hand. 
The payoff is much higher if you're able to assemble multiple Pyromancers, but you really have to be concerned about getting hit by Electrolyze, or even Supreme Verdict in that spot is going to cost you a lot. Yeah, Brennan has so much cleaning up to do. After that Vendillion click, his hand is a Bedlam Reveler, a second Pyromancer, and four more lands. That's after discarding two lands. Rather than making that risky Pyromancer line, it looks like Brennan's going to flash back in hopes of cleaning this up. Yep. Yeah, getting some more spells in the hand, getting the guaranteed value on this Pyromancer. I, I do like the flashback on the looting here. Yeah, two, two more lands into the graveyard for Tecandio. And now he has to decide if he wants to offer up the Pyromancer as a trait. Even after that, that Faithless Looting, after having looted away four lands, Brennan's hand still appears to be three lands. Bedlam Reveler and Inquisition of Kozilek. He's just flooded hard. Yeah, the Bedlam Reveler back to costing the full eight right now. Lands are really yeah. not the way you want yeah, to get to like, that threshold. I feel like when you have a six or seven mana Bedlam Reveler, uh, Jeskai, Jeskai can find ways to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> On Pete's side, Lightning Bolt's down the Pyromancer, attacks for three. He has found a search for Ascanta, but he's just going to pass here, maybe leaving up some sort of reactive card. Wouldn't be surprised if there's a Logic Knot hanging out. Yeah, it looks like there is. Five cards in Pete's graveyard, double blue. That should work. Brennan will go for Inquisition of Kozilek, however. And this might be a good opportunity for Brennan. Pete could, if he has that search for Ascanta, he may lose the card to this Inquisition. Generally, if you have a counter spell and it's your only counter, and you're worried that that's what's going to be taken, you just fire it off on the discard spell. Yeah. It's we'll, we'll find out how highly Pete actually values it. You know Decandio doesn't have too much going on. You know he needs to draw something. But with only one counter spell, you can't deal with that something anyway. Yeah, what I, it feels like is happening, and you see he'll just show the hand is that Pete is really respecting Blood Moon here by not playing that search for Ascanta. That would have been the, the ideal response, right? He made search and Brennan just shrugs and Blood Moons, then would have been a great exchange for Brennan. Mm -hmm. As it is, if he drew the Blood Moon, it looks like Inquisition will clear the way. We look over Pete's hand. He's got Logic Knot, search for Ascanta, Snapcaster Mage. And it looks like Cryptic Command is the fourth one. Confirm on that. Yeah, currently Ingram only on two blue mana sources. Right. Well, once you find that third blue, Cryptic is mighty powerful. Candio obviously can't take that one. Yeah. It's a four mana spell. Well, if Brennan takes any, if he doesn't take Search for Ascanta, then Pete will have that third blue wrapped up. There's five cards in the graveyard, make that six. You play Search, and next turn it's transforming into your third blue mana. Yeah. yeah. Pick up for Brennan, not Blood Moon. Looks like Lingering Souls. I mean, a great draw in any capacity. That I think. That card's good on turn 3, 4, and 10 in this matchup. Tell me about it. <laughs> you, say it. You, that, you lose to that one that sometimes? That's on the short list of cards that I've lost the most matches of Magic the Gathering to. I think my list for that is just Blood Moon is in first by a country mile. <laughs> Search for Ascanta for Peach. We count six cards in the graveyard. There's land five. Pete does have a Snapcaster Mage in hand. Could flash back a Serum Visions or a Lightning Bolt. If he goes for those plays, though, the search will not... Well, actually, because he has a fetch land, he, uh, he has one extra card. This, yep. actually, this is fine. And this would be a window where Decandio would really like to have a Blood Moon, because going forward, Ingram yeah. will be untapping with Cryptic Command Mana. Swing of three for Brennan. And you see that, you mentioned how... Uh, Vendillion Click's just difficult in this matchup, and that one Lingering Souls just shows that off. Yep. Pete at 14 as three attackers come in. He's got a free one. He can trade with one of them. Let's see what he wants to do. Yeah, even if the Lingering Souls wasn't hanging out to be flashed back later, the card's already embarrassing Vendillion Click. Right. And looks like we're going to see Snap Bolt. And this just shows off how difficult it is to deal with Lingering Souls. Pete is going to have to use a Snapcaster Mage just with a Lightning Bolt just to trade with half a Lingering Souls. He still takes damage. Yep. Brennan will make Young Pyromancer. Flashback Lingering Souls. Get two more souls and an Elemental Token. You see, Token looks to be sandwiched between those Lingering Souls. And then he uses Fatal Push, so another elemental. He's just got Bedlam Reveler left in hand, but made a huge army that turn, and now Pete has some work to do. 
Yeah, and uh, I think just Bedlam level is the wrong way to frame it. That is a really nice leftover. Pete is really drawing to Supreme Verdict now, and he has to find that. You can tread water with Cryptic Commands right. for a while, but you have to clean these creatures up. Well, Pete's found something he likes. He keeps the card on top of the deck. Thanks to those trades last turn, he still can transform it into Escant to the Sunken Rune. But six lands here. We'll see if he has an answer. Just passes to Brennan. We also notice Brennan has Fatal Push Inquisition in his graveyard. He's cloaked. Looks like one mana off casting Bedlam Reveler. Yep. And if you can force Pete to tap your team down's Cryptic Command, that clears the coast for just resolve the Bedlam Reveler. Gas back up, draw three cards. That's really powerful. Yep. Does that. And here we go. There's land six for Brennan. Shocks for it. And that will be Bedlam Reveler. A great draw for Decandio. The three four will draw him three cards. And in a game that looked like Pete had control, this really shows off why the matchup is so difficult. Yeah, the cards, they don't look like much on paper, but we've seen time and again, Faithless Looting is one of the best cards in the modern format. The ability to flash it back. Decandio cycled through a lot of garbage. Yeah, he had a bad draw. His cantrips didn't find him much action early on. There was a lot to be concerned about from the Jeskai side, but just the speed with which Brennan was able to rebuild was impressive. Mm -hmm. And now, Brennan has picked up a Blood Moon. So you have enough creatures to force Pete to cast a Cryptic Command. You're coming in for just too much damage. And then when that's yeah. down, Decandio can cast that Blood Moon. It's going to turn off the Ascanta, and it's going to mess up Pete's mana. Well, Pete would love to find a window where he, I think he can use Ascanta here. Sur you know, search up a Supreme Verdict, cast it. The question is how, just what is the count on damage on Brennan's side? There's 10 as it stands right now. Brennan, Pete could, could go to 1. But that's so risky. And remember, uh, the prowess trigger on Bedlam Reveler, yeah. if Pete Brennan goes for pre-combat Blood Moon, that works. And this is a Lightning Bolt deck, too. It's really dicey yeah. to go down that low. Cryptic Command from Pete. You see Brennan has Blood Moon, Coligan's Command, Land. Those are good holdings. Yeah. And Pete just fetched up a Hollowed Found with that Scalding Tarn as opposed to finding a third island. So when this Blood Moon comes down, it becomes a lot harder for Pete to play the game. Yeah, there are three basic islands in the deck. Yeah, tap draw from Ingram. He does not have double blue up. Brennan knows the coast is clear for Blood Moon if he wants it. I gotta imagine he wants it. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. we go. There we go. Great, great card. Just best card in modern. <laughs> Here comes some fun interactive magic. All right, those are mountains. It's okay. Mountains answer enchantments at least. Yeah. Lightning Helix, the draw for Pete. He's got plenty of red mana to cast it with. Yeah, it's castable. He's got that planes. Easy. Untap Celestial Colony because it's a mountain now. Great. Things are just fine. An otherwise interactive game of magic. <laughs> just Blood Moon doing what it does. I mean, even without the Blood Moon, Decandio was pulling further and further ahead. Yeah. This kind of cements it. Serum Visions off Snapcaster for Pete. That uses all of his blue mana for the turn. He's at 11. Means this Snapcaster Mage is forced into chump blocking Bedlam Reveler. And previously, Pete was drawing a Supreme Verdict. There's only one basic planes in the deck. So that's just, that's just, that's just dead now. You have to get the sure Blood Moon off the is. table. So you have to find first your third island, and then you need to cryptic the Blood Moon off the table, and then you'll be able to resolve Supreme Verdict. Yeah, and there's no... Uh Looking if he had a card like Detention Sphere, but I don't think he does. No, it does not appear that he has a way to remove it. Yeah, typically you won't see that in Jeskai. Blue-White tends to play yeah. a few copies. Helix on Young Pyromancer. Pete's going to try to play as long as he can. Actually, I suppose um, the new innovation, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. That one can deal with a Blood Moon. And it can be cast off of one planes, one okay, island. Okay, yeah, he has the two copies of Teferi. Absolutely. Coligan's command with that uh, is going to go ahead and take care of the Snapcaster and that last card in Pete's hand. Brennan draws, so that's one prowess trigger, so four damage from the Reveler, six damage from tokens. We'll make that five from tokens. One of them can't attack. Send Pete... Looks like down to five was the call. And only card in hand is what he drew. Electrolyze, sure. That's not bad. Takes care of two creatures, draws, but still not enough at the moment. 
And he'll pick up the cards, does not find a way to answer the Reveler. And despite some early stumbles, Brennan DeCandio pulls ahead here in game one, and he's up 1-0. Yeah, that's the thing about Jeskai. Your bad matchups, you give them enough time to recover. All right. Well, Pete's going to have some work to do. That showed off a lot of weakness in his deck in this matchup. Yep. We'll go over the sideboard when we come back in just a minute. back here to round number three of day one of our The Invitational here at SCG Con. Pete Ingram and Brennan DeCandio facing off in the feature match area. Brennan on Mardu Pyromancer takes game one. His value deck is too much right now for Pete to catch up with, so he's going to have to look over toward the sideboard. We have two copies of Ancestral Vision, two Dispel, a Ceremonious Rejection, a Disdainful Stroke, and a six-mana Elspeth, a Wear Tear. A timer enforcements. Yeah, actually, that's a second copy. He has one in the main, so this this is the second one in the sideboard. He has a celestial purge, runed halo, a second negate, engineered explosives, a second vendillion click, and a stony silence. So this matchup, we're mostly looking at the high impact cards, ancestral right. vision to keep pace with the card advantage engines of the Mardu deck, Elspeth Sun's champion because it's a better token maker than what Brennan is up to. Um, and then beyond that, uh, Engineered Explosives to clean up tokens. That one's pretty po powerful. Yeah, it's a red-black deck, so is Celestial Purge reasonable? Yeah, that one, that one definitely plays. It cleans up a Blood Moon. You might want Negate for that reason as well. You cover Culligan's Command and Blood Moon. It doesn't really yeah. cover everything. It trades with half a Lingering Souls, but it has its spots anyway. Rune Halo is interesting. Sometimes that's a card advantage removal spell, but in this matchup, because he's getting beaten up by... You can't name things like Spirit Tokens. Right. You, it's actually... Probably not worth putting in. Yeah, it's kind of like a C minus in this matchup. Wouldn't be too, too interested in it. Yeah. I like it in the same way where I like a card in standard, like Ixalan's Binding in mid range mirrors, where you, you if you catch two cards with it, you two for one to your opponent. Yep. Yeah, most of the stuff that you catch here, it's still damaging you in other ways. If you name Young yeah. Pyromancer, it's still making elemental tokens. If you name Bedlam, Bedlam Reveler, well, there's only three copies. Oh, yeah, it's just four copies, but um, it draw, drew three cards already. Turn one Serum Visions for Pete. I was hoping to see one of those Ancestral Vision off the top for game one, on turn one. And remember, Ryan, I want to go back to last game. Ingram cast three Serum Visions. 
he double topped on the other second and third ones and still ended up losing the game. And that's one of those situations where I have to wonder whether the blueprint Pete drew up just wasn't actually there. Honestly, that's just kind of a symptom of Jeskai's positioning. It's the, quote, good cards deck, except the issue is most of the cards are very medium. <laughs> In this matchup, he's not the good cards deck. Yeah, 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 Brennan's the good cards deck here. I think Marty was just a better good cards deck than Jeskai. Yeah, I mean, it's like if the cards he kept on top weren't enough, then what would he be looking for? See Brennan turn one Faithless Looting. He actually discards a Fatal Push, not necessarily a card I expected to see in post board. He's really respecting Spell Queller with that. Yeah, it answers Celestial Colonnade, which can be a problem sometimes. And you can just loot it away when it's bad. Yeah, the argument of respecting Celestial Colonnade, if that's why Brennan's kept it in, it shows that Brennan has a big will, not just a willingness, but a desire to take Pete into the late game. Oh, yeah. Neither of these decks are trying to close particularly quickly. And if it's a matchup where they can help it, they're not, yeah. not going to try at all. Yeah, in this kind of matchup, I feel like for role assessment, the first thing I want to look at, think about, would ask the players, if it's turn 11, who's winning? Frequently, it is going to be Mardu. Okay. Uh, Jeskai can't win much faster than that. If they, right. can, if they can have a stable board at that point, they still have to close quickly from there. They're going to need to get if some they, Snapcaster Mages online. If they play long enough, I think Mar Mardu will make up the difference. Yes. We'll see Inquisition of Kozilek from Brennan. Good afternoon. This is the last call. If Pete wants to Melodic Knot, it'll cost both the cards in his graveyard. So he decides not to. His hand, a third land in Field of Ruin. He has Logic Knot, Snapcaster Mage, Elspeth Sun's Champion, Cryptic Command, and I believe the last one's a Vendillion Click. So, unfortunate that Brennan can't take either this, this Elspeth or this Cryptic Command. Those are going to be the best cards in the hand here. He'll want to be able to thought these before that Elspeth can actually come online. He'll take Logic Knot. If he is setting up for Blood Moon, makes a ton of sense. Now Pete just drew another Logic Knot. So That's smart. That's a good strategy. That's a great strategy. Draw the card that make you the old thought seize bug yeah. here in action. Yeah, Brennan just has another basic land, like basic Plains Blood Moon. He's going to jam it here. Oh, yeah. Because Pete can't even respond to Field of Ruin because Brennan would have all basics. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the coast looks clear here. I think that's going to be Brennan's play. Pete's going to slam this top deck's Logic Knot, and Brennan's going to get... It, it, it's, it's about to happen. <laughs> Brennan's going to get the planes. Maybe he doesn't play. He's going to get a second swamp. He's going to go for a blood moon. And Pete Shrug had it. Had it. Not for one. I would like you to pay one more mana. <laughs> Another good draw. Pete does pick up a fourth land, so that Cryptic Command's online. We're getting ever closer to being able to cast that Elspeth. This is honestly a stage where if the Candio yeah. cast a Thoughtseize next turn... Pete's relatively Fine. likely to Cryptic Command it. Yeah. Just protect that Elspeth. That's the plan. It's his best card in the matchup by a lot. Well, looks like we might get to find out, Ryan. I believe Brennan drawing another Inquisition of Kozilek. Unfortunately, that can't take any of the cards in Pete's hand that matter. So you might let it resolve. <laughs> That's this one, yeah, you don't really have to fight over. You can cast the Snapcaster Mage, I suppose, because it's going to be probably tagged. So cast Snapcaster, target a Logic Knot, and let life move on? It looks like instead what Pete's going to do is let Brennan take either Vendillion Click or Snapcaster and then cast the remaining one. Pretty easy choice to take the Snapcaster there. Yeah, that's the card I'd want. Pete will go ahead and fetch end step. Brennan's hand, two Coligan's Commands and a black card. Yeah. But he doesn't have any creatures to buy back with Coligan's Command right now, so he can't really make it a two-for-one. Well, it looks like uh, he's going to get a Vendillion Click and a cards out of Pete's hand. If he casts the Click now... Right, that'll be really strong. Yeah. Who do you think Pete's target? Pete targets with the Click. At this point, he's just left over with the best card in the matchup. It's Vendillion Click. Yeah, and he has Cryptic Command, too. I don't think you really want to wheel either of those. So All presumably right. you would target to Candio. What do you feel about the line here of Pete of just instead of making this play of just doing nothing? Or does he have, he has to be more aggressive than that? Can he, can, then, you know, like the control player in me here wants to do nothing. I mean, here's the line I'm going to pitch to you. Have that Vendillion click in the sideboard right now. I mean, I, I hate registering creatures. I like that. <laughs> and see, with the click on the stack, Brennan will choose deal two damage and discard. 
Ooh, and Ingram actually discards the Elspeth. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess he is a ways away from it. For the record, the Vendillion click is targeting Brennan. So after Rosales Colgan's command, it's going to look through Brennan's hand. We see Liliana the Last Hope and Colgan's command. Fair enough. I can't imagine Pete will leave him with both. He's going to get one of these to go away. I would be interested in getting rid of that Liliana. As you saw there, that Colgan's command was only good because Pete allowed it to be. Right. The second one's a lot worse. Takini doesn't have any creatures yet. The Liliana threatens to win the game on its own. Uh, Ingram does have the Cryptic Command still. Yeah. Well, if you don't take the Coligan's Command, then you're going to lose it, lose your Cryptic to it. Either countering it or getting it discarded. Yeah, you're, you're forced to counter it. That exchange is kind of whatever. Yeah. Land 5 for Pete holds up that Cryptic, but both players know it's there. And Faithless Looting was the draw for Brennan. It's pretty good here. Yeah, not sure what he picked up initially off of the Vendillion Click. He's actually going to use the Faithless Looting in his graveyard. He's going to use the flashback on it. Yep. This is this is that great sequencing. Yeah. The one from your hand is always card disadvantage. And if you discard it to the flashback one that was freely hanging out in your graveyard, just get to flashback the other one. And he discards the other one. Looks like he got rid of Colgan's command with it. And now Pete will go ahead and Field of Ruin. Brennan's leftovers, L Young Pyromancer, and Liliana the Last Hope. Insurance. Should be able to stick some kind of threat there. Brandon drawing, drawing up to three here. Yeah, Lillian Pyro left in his hand. Gets a land. Here's young Pyromancer. He's playing this one as the bait spell into the cryptic, and both players know that. Yes. Yeah, unlikely that Ingram just forgot that there's a Planeswalker hanging out in Decandio's right. hand. Well, do you counter if you're Pete? If you don't, Brennan will likely just cast Faithless Looting here. Yep. Pyromancer is something that's relatively easy to clean up, certainly yeah. as compared to Liliana the Last Hope. So here's the difficulty. It's easy to clean up, but Pete only has one card. Nonetheless, he holds onto the Cryptic, and Brennan keeps going to work. Flashes back that Faithless Looting, gets a 1-1. One -one discards it looks like two lands so his hand is now wear tear and the liliana yep the engine's humming yeah brennan's deck just so many cards with flashbacks so many two for ones like pyromancer it's it's tough for jeskai to stick in the game yeah, meanwhile pete's got this cryptic command that he doesn't really have any interest in yeah. casting that's the only resource he has available and it's of questionable quality. Well, here's a great draw. Pete's on six lands, and he picked up Search for Ezkanta. He'll be able to transform it next turn, and he gets to leave up Cryptic Command while doing it. This may I think this was the card he wanted to see. Decandio has picked up a Wear Tear. So, Decandio yeah. can minimally force action, and then follow up with Liliana. I suppose just Wear Tear right here, almost. And Brennan, he's going to use the Lily as a bait spell. A and you got to be scared in Pete's spot, like, oh, because you know this is the bait spell, and there you're going to see the yeah. tear half on wear tear taking care of search. And now, Pete down to just random cards in hand. We'll find out if any of them are any good. Uh, Supreme Verdict seems great. Above average. His last card in hand is Celestial Purge. He cannot cast it this turn because he used that verdict. Yeah, it's still not a bad one. So now player's playing off the top. This is not a spot where I'm super pumped to be playing against Mardu. Player playing off the top. <laughs> the candy yeah. flashing back that fatal suiting. Right, when Brennan's playing off the top of his deck, his, his cards all do things in the graveyard. And this is what Mardu does each time we've seen him cast. He's just discarding excess lands. And here's Collective Brutality. That will hit the Celestial Purge. Good winner to cast that. Theoretically, he could have caught a Cryptic Command yeah. in Pete's hand. So he got whatever was there out. Pete hoping for a Teferi, a Snapcaster Mage, a, one of his bigs. Looks like Brennan has picked up yet another Culligan's Command. This yeah. one's going to, he's going to have trouble really converting that. I think it's that and a Collective Brutality. There's a lot going on. Pete plays a land, says go, and actually now that Pete's down to one card, and step Brennan's going to buy back Young Pyromancer and make Pete discard. Turns out Pete's hand was all lands. So all right. Sulfur Falls goes. And Brennan drew a Bedlam Reveler. This matchup's hard. For this ma I feel so bad for the Jeskai players when I watch these matchups. Now, the way that Brennan has shaped up his mana base, he won't be able to Pyromancer and Reveler this turn. You see the two swamps yeah. and there's the planes there. He really prioritized, it looks like, getting non-red mana in case a Blood Moon showed up. Yeah, he got the second swamp to cast the Blood Moon on turn three. Right, and now has the basic planes. 
Electrolyze takes care of the Pyromancer. And Jace the Mind Sculptor for Pete. A huge drop Electrolyze. This may be exactly what he needs to get back into the game. Well, you get to Fate Seal your opponent, and then you don't get to see the Bedlam Reveler that he already had in hand. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. That one's not a good one to bounce with Jace. Now Brennan cast Bedlam Reveler for two mana. He'll discard his hand and draw three. Now one of those cards in hand was one of what was kept on top. Looks like it was just a pair of discard spells. And he's going to draw into Thoughtseize, Blood Moon, Fetchland. Actually a pretty beatable holding. Yeah. The Blood Moon not really great anymore. Ingram has found a bunch of basics, but uh, he's almost out of Faithless Looting, so he's already flashback three copies of it. So right. you may as well just cast. Well, we'll see what Pete wants to do. He no longer has the luxury to Fate Seal because of that Bedlam Reveler in play, so he'll brainstorm with Jace. Finds Engineer Explosives. In no world is that going to take care of Bedlam Reveler. Can't really get that one to eight. Takes some weird things happening in your game. Got to surge note it. <laughs> Something. He has picked up another search for Escanta and Engineered Explosives. I mean, Explosives is a really clean and easy answer to the Blood Moon. And you see he has the plains, island, yeah. and then a bunch of mountains. But he's not unlocking anything really meaningful. Yeah, right now I'm not sure I, if I'm in Pete's spot how much I care about the Blood Moon. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to get rid of it at some point because I like casting Snapcaster on my cryptic commands. But <laughs> that's a ways off. Here is Explosives on three from Ingram. And search for Ascanta. He leaves two up for the Explosives, says go. I like all everything about this. There's a reason to clean up the Blood Moon. And now the question is, can Brennan prowess twice? If he can, he can, the Jace is his. Here's Young Pyromancer. Thought sees That makes a 1-1. One, one. Brennan takes two. I don't believe Pete has any cards in his hand. He does not. Attacks Jace down to one. He'll say go, but Pete's going to transfer. He'll end a step, get rid of Blood Moon, and then he'll go to work with Ascanta. Between Jace and Ascanta, Pete is. He's got his own late game going. Mill's Ancestral Vision. Here's a transform. He's done a lot of the work on turning the corner. He does yeah. need to clean up the battlefield a little bit. Yeah, we'll see if this search and Jace together can find another sweeper. I think if he can find a Supreme Verdict with one of the two, I'm pretty in. Draws three. One of them's Teferi, the other two are lands. Teferi and Jace is kind of a nice combination. You get to, to tuck away that Bedlam Reveler, and then when you know it's on top, Jace yeah. can make it go away. I did want to look at sequencing here. You see, as to Pete casts Teferi. If he has cantered in the other order with Jace, he could have looked deeper if there was, if say he was looking for a specific card. Yeah. Plays Teferi, untaps two, says go. And his last card was Cryptic Command. That is huge with Teferi. Oh, yeah. Tap, draw. Now Pete gets to untap with a big stack of lands, a Jace, and a Teferi. That should be the late game he needs to win. Yeah, people talk a big game about untapping with Jace, but untapping with Jace plus Teferi? Yeah. You see timely reinforcements picked up for Pete that actually cleans the board very well here. Yeah. Won't gain the six life as he is somehow ahead on that race, but uh, the three tokens yeah. they they come in handy. It's all is all that damage just Brennan doing it to himself? Is he done yeah, online? I mean it was that thoughts easy cast just to get some prowess triggers and fetch lands, a little shock. Looks like Snapcaster on Supreme Verdict will be the pick for Pete Ingram. And Brennan's actually going to pick up the cards. I like that from Brennan. Sixteen forty-five on the clock. This is about right. Yeah. I would like to actually finish the match. Let's go to the third game. All right. So Pete Ingram, good sideboard strategy. I think a big turn on top decking that Jace off the Electrolyze. But yes. he, he capitalized on it. Definitely. All right. Brennan's going to have to recover. We're going to look at how he has boarded for the matchup and discuss his game three when we come back.
lands, two of them fetch lands. He has Wear Tear, Logic Knot, Seer and Visions, and the card I believe will be taken here, Ancestral Vision. This one looks like a pretty clean Ancestral Vision. Yeah. We saw Pete actually discard and move past both his Ancestral Visions post in that last game, but it's because none of them were in his opener. Yeah. It is very different on turn one. Fourth land picked up for Pete. So now he's got a counter spell and a artifact removal spell. This is putting a lot of pressure on the Serum Visions in his hands to produce a card that does something. Yeah, he'd be in trouble if Decandio just had turn two young Pyromancer. Right. I like how lean Brennan's threats are as well. Four Pyromancer, four Revel Reveler. Four Souls. That's it. That's how he attacks. Yep. Nothing else. Some combos in the sideboard. Yeah, I, I don't... Even though Jeskar is an all-spells deck, I still don't think they come in here. It dies to everything. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's a problem. The matchup's definitely about playing for position. Value is the most important thing. It's three minutes, two, three, not very exciting. Well, a pretty Pete escaped that turn. Brandon on turn two when Pete was down, just played Faithless Looting and passed. Pete picked up yet another land. This one's Celestial Colonnade. So if he has to keep flooding, that's the one he wants to do it with. Yes. Great third land drop. Generally the ideal one for the deck. In the meantime, he has to leave up that Logic Knot. Yeah, leave Logic Knot. He also has this a possible Blood Moon covered with that Wear Tear in his hand. And Brennan has both Lingering Souls and Blood Moon. We'll see how he wants to start. Brennan knows about the Wear Tear. Right, so you think then he'll go for Souls here? It, it, it kind of depends. It, it, the Souls is more likely to resolve. Yeah. And he doesn't have very many cards in hand, so it's unlikely he's trying to leverage anything else. Yeah. So leading with the Souls here makes a lot of sense. And sure, this is hard on Pete's side. You know, do you counter this? Does it matter? Right. It's going to get two cards out of Pete. The only clean answers he has to Lingering Souls are just chaining Electrolyze. He uh, does have Supreme Verdict, and I believe he has picked one up. Okay, so maybe... Yeah, we see he's fetching for basic planes, so if that's the case, sure. Let's Lingering Souls is fine. He'll take some damage as he works towards Supreme Verdict. It's one of those games where it's actually an interesting decision. Yeah. Should the Candio flash back the Souls? How much do I want to play around this? I think if they connect, you don't really need to flash back just yet. Pete has a Vendillion click, and this, he might be doing this during draw step. It's a good time to do it. Against a deck that's a sorcery speed like Mardu, I'm, I agree. Yo, Lightning Bolt, Fatal Push, Blood Moon in Brennan's hand. There's not that much action. Yep, and no reason to respond to the Vendillion Click trigger because there's just two clean answers to the click already hanging out. He doesn't really want to play the fourth land. He would rather discard that yeah. to flashing back to Faithless Looting. I like this from Pete. Took nothing. Look at Brent, Look at Pete's lands. He doesn't care about Blood Moon. Yeah. He has it. He also has the answer to it. Fetch land from Brennan. That means this Fatal Push could clear away a Vendillion Click. You would rather have the Lightning Bolt left over at the end of things. I suppose the other thing about it, once, once you establish that Blood Moon is not going to be very good, then you already have a card that you're interested in discarding to the Faithless Looting, so playing the fourth land does make some sense here. Also, is going to need double red at some point if he's ever going to cast a Bedlam Reveler. Fatal push down the click, and then he'll make Blood Moon. Not the best Blood Moon here as Pete takes two. Picked up Path to Exile that turn. It means he can make Untapped Celestial Colony. It does currently turn off the Supreme Verdict in Pete's hand. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Wear Tear is at the ready if he wants to unlock that card. So it's not a huge issue. Both players now going to 13 on the attack. Yep. Bolt and Inquisition are the cards in Brennan's hand. Too bad he couldn't Inquisition before he got the Blood Moon down. Yeah, here's Inquisition. And now that should force on the Wear Tear. Yes. Or at least the Logic Knot. Right. Pretty stocked graveyard. Looks like six cards hanging out down there. There he goes. And a Tear Blood Moon. And it looks like Logic Knot the Inquisition. 
He'll need to tap one and exile three to ensure a counter spell, and that's what he'll do. So X equals four, that can't that doesn't work. Blood Moon's gone. Inquisition's gone. See if Brennan flashes back those souls. If he does, the Supreme Verdict in Pete's hand is gonna be mighty nice. Does he pull the trigger? It'll be really aggressive to go for that. Kind of, you think about the ways you can lose the game. Supreme Verdict is kind of item one on the list. If you flash back the souls and then you get verdicted, you currently yeah. the souls are just getting in. He's getting his chip shots. I think he's gonna go for more here, and that's what he does. He had Faithless Looting and Souls in his graveyard, so he'll make two more, and this should force the Supreme Verdict out of Pete. Yeah, and you, you saw him thinking about whether to go for the looting there or to go for the souls. Yep, here's Supreme Verdict, so board clean, back to Brennan. Needs to find another threat. Does he have to looting for it? Looks like he does. Draws one fatal push, that's not much, to Inquisition. His hand is not playing with him very nicely at the moment. No. Discards Lightning Bolt Mountain, and he'll just go to work with some discard spells. Here's Inquisition. Looks like it got Snapcaster Range out of Pete's hand. I don't hate that. That is an above average conversion. But Search for Escanta made from Pete. And if Brennan doesn't find a threat, Search will run away with things. Mm -hmm. And Pete's last card is Path to Exile. So the Canyon needs more than just a threat. Colgan's Command from Brennan. But, right, the game, the most important thing on the board right now is that search for Escanta. There is a colonnade in play for Pete, but it looks like Brennan's fatal push will cover that. But if Escanta starts tapping each turn, none of this is going to matter. And still no creatures to really leverage that Coligan's command. Yeah, Pete transforms, casts Serum Visions, finds Snapcaster Mage, two white cards on the bottom. Ingram seems to be pulling away. Not Snapcast Range. Correction here. It's Vendillion Click. He wants to see if the coast is clear. And now we're going to see Colgan's command in response. Kill and discard. Gets Pete's last card, which is also Path to Exile. So he'll path his own click. Might as well get a land out of it. Makes sense. Discard spell, removal spell. Pete very quickly says, keep him. Yeah. Those don't matter much. Right. Brennan would love to see something like Blood Moon off the top here. It looks like that's not going to happen. Spend of Ancestral Visions for Pete. And now that Ascanta's up, he'll say go. He's choosing to use Ascanta over Colonnade. And Liliana from Brennan. Let's get a spin of Ascanta. Top four. Did he find anything? Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yes, he did. You could argue that that's a more powerful Planeswalker than Liliana the Last Hope. Right, and he knows about the fatal push in Brennan's hand. So Pete actually cannot use Colonnade to threaten the Liliana just yet. Mm -hmm. However, with a land drop here, he has enough mana to cast Jace and use as Kanta. Or, or he can top deck to Fairy. Speaking of Planeswalkers that are more powerful than Liliana the Last Hope. Yep, draws a card, untaps two, leaves up as Kanta. Pete is pulling away. And... But in these sideboarded games, Decandio's draws, he's, he's really been struggling to establish anything. Yeah, well, I asked earlier if this went to turn 12, who would win? And I do agree that Mardu's got a lot of chances, but especially the cards like with cards like Teferi, this feels closer than I recall it being. Yeah, I think Teferi is definitely a major upgrade for Jeskai in this matchup. When you get two Planeswalkers online, it's pretty easy to keep pace on value with most anything. And Pete even missing on some value on that end step last, last turn. His as Kanta missed, but who cares? Here's the second Planeswalker. It's Elspeth's son's champion. And as we saw last game, the game ended when Pete had two Planeswalkers, and it looks like this one is going to end the same way. Yeah, and Elspeth just closes very quickly. The card's... It's, it's downsized at six mana, and Modern's not a format for six drops, but once it hits the table, this is... Lights out. Yes. See Pete discarding his extra Teferi to Coligan's command. Has Logic Knot and a bunch of cards up. This should be over quickly. Yeah. This is all, remember that, Ancestral Visions hasn't even come, come off Suspend yet. Ugh. Cast of Lingering Souls or Brennan? Gets to use that Liliana the Last Hope to take care of one third of an Elspeth activation. Nice. Three more soldiers. A swing in. Now Liliana's at six. Pete should hope to answer that. 
And look at the, I like this on Pete's side. Now that he sees Fatal pushes down, he's thinking maybe Colonnade can do some work. Black's right, Colonnade. And he's actually used Teferi to, to, move, to tuck the Liliana back into the deck. And then he'll make his third Planeswalker. He's just going to cast Jace. And this is such a show of strength. Jace will unsummon a spirit token and just tax for one. Yeah, pretty much just committing game actions. Get the game over. All of the Planeswalkers, I'd say it was the Gatewatch, but that's not what this is at all. But Brennan's going to go ahead and extend the hand. And in what we thought was a tough matchup, Pete Ingram, on the back of his sideboard, takes both sideboarded games, and he's...